But this problem has not been caused by Rwanda, has not been abated by Rwanda. On the, court, on the contrary, in the last three, four years, nobody in this region, on this continent and beyond has worked very hard to see peace come to our country and the peace to our neighboring country than Rwanda. But actually the problem came from outside. Both if you have to look at the long history of it or even the recent one. This recent history, this recent problem that you see here was created by the international community, our partners. And because they don't listen, they are so arrogant, they don't listen. In the end, they don't actually provide the solution. They just keep creating problems for us. They are so arrogant that they don't listen. We know better our problems. We know better these problems of the region. We are genuine about wanting to find a solution. But they will come, run over everything, like other people don't matter. Then when things explode, well, they will come around and blame you for it, even if they are the ones who cause the problem. From nowhere, when we have been dealing with all these problems for all these years, this country, Congo, DRC, had elections with all problems they had. We tried to play a very positive role with the government in the Congo. And after that, we were working together to deal with the security challenges that affect us, that have affected us for the last 18 years. We worked with them to contribute to the challenges they had in their own country, some of them. There are others we couldn't be helpful about. And then some people are not happy about that, I think. They come up with ideas of having people they want to arrest in the Congo for justice, for accountability, which, which is good. <laughs> if only it wasn't selective. If you really want to hold people accountable, then you hold people accountable. And they came to us and are saying, you know what? We want to arrest some people in the Congo. You want, you want, we want you to be helpful to arrest people. We said, if you want to arrest people in the Congo, <laughs> international community, if you can do anything. You, you don't need us. <laughs> you want to arrest people? Go ahead and arrest them. Why, why do you even come to us? They said, no, 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 we want you to help uh, the government of DRC to help to arrest so and so. And he said, yeah, but how does that become our problem? Why don't you go and help them to arrest the people you want to arrest for ICC, this International Criminal Court, which has been so highly politicized that it has lost meaning. And we said, for whatever reason, we don't, you don't even need to explain to us, go ahead and do whatever you want to do, but don't involve us 
we don't want it. We don't want to be involved. We don't even understand what you are doing. They said, no, 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 you must, you must. Now, the, actually, the pressure turned from <laughs> the country where they wanted to arrest people, they turned to us. This was before this conflict, by the way. When I'm saying this, it's before this conflict. I'm only giving you the origin of it. How it doesn't even involve Rwanda. Even though at the end of it, <laughs> you've seen all the accusations. I'm sure maybe at the end, by the end of the day, we are going to be accused of holding a, a meeting in Nyachinama plotting to do something in the Congo. <laughs> No, but fortunately we are, we, we are with some of their representatives here, so <laughs> I, I think they may, they may be considered because of this. But, and you know, it kept going on and on and on. And we were saying, look, but you are messing up. Things are beginning to take shape in the Congo. We are working with the Congolese government. There are still problems. Instead of you joining hands with everybody and trying to help the situation, this whole approach of yours is going to create a mess. We warned them, we advised them, we appealed to them, they just couldn't listen. I think then they developed an idea that if we can't have you support this government and support us to arrest this, then we will put you together with those who want to arrest. That's really how it turned out to be. I'm not dramatizing anything here. I'm just telling you the real story. And then we even tried to be helpful. I was the first person when we learned what was going on and how it was being messed up. I called the president of the Congo. I picked a phone and called him. I said, you know what? There is something coming up. I don't understand it. Are you aware of it? Are you behind it? With these others here? Aren't you creating problems for yourself? And he said, no, no, you know, uh, actually, no, for me, uh, uh, Yes, they have come to me, they have told me this, but uh, no, for me, my approach is different. I want to arrest this fellow uh, for his indiscipline, but I'm not handing him over to ICC. This is a conversation. I'm, I'm, I'm just revealing some secrets to you. I said, I said, oh, but I hope you are going to be able to contain this problem we are seeing on the ground. I told him the details of what we had from our intelligence. And he said, what do we do? I said, why don't we have our people meet and discuss this and find a good way of managing it? To which he agreed, and we had a meeting in Rubavu, this former Gisein place. These officials of ours had the whole day, whole night, discussing this issue. And, in fact, agreeing with the officials in the DRC about some of the problems they had to address in order to avoid all that. They were agreeing. They even called in representatives of these so-called rebels to be part of the meeting on request of government. The government of DRC is the one that requested that these people come. And these officers, one of them being this fellow who is leading this rebellion, they were in the meeting. They explained their grievances and the government representatives of Congo we are taking a note and saying, yeah, this, we are aware of some of these things, actually. They try to say, as we go back, we will address them. That's what they said. When they left and went back, they just did the opposite. 
And we heard the fighting was going on. Because they went ahead and wanted to arrest some people. <laughs> people whom they had been discussing with. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the whole thing was spinning out of control. Again, I called this leader of Congo and talked to him. Now, when things continued getting out of, the only thing that came out was now <laughs> you end the whole world, every country that you know, you know, these powerful countries, the, then the Congo, Rwanda, Rwanda, Rwanda is helping the rebels. Helping them with what? And for what reason? They say, they become very, and say, supplies. Supplies of what? Guns? These fellows are picking guns from their own armories. The arms, the ammunition they have, are their own. They are their countries. We are not supplying even one bullet. We have not. If we had, by the way, I would be here telling you that we did. Because we would have done it for a reason. But we have not even had a reason to have this conflict going on. On the contrary, we tried to prevent it. And we advised both the Congolese government and this international community that never listens. We advised them. But now, anyway, for the reason that they are able to put the mess they have caused on other people's shoulders, maybe that's why they don't listen. They don't listen. They don't listen like they never listened when the genocide took place here in Rwanda. In fact, this ICTR, they put in place to try people over genocide should have tried some members of the international community instead. <laughs> because for this, in the same way, they never listened. Even when they are seeing facts, even when they are seeing things happening, leading to what people are telling them it will lead to. They will just because they know in the end they will blame it on somebody else anyway. They have the power to do that. They have the power to screw up and then blame it on somebody else. That's what goes on every year, every decade. They've screwed up in this case of Congo and they bring it and put it on our shoulders. Well, you are aware, I think somebody alluded to it, well, I was seeing some $200,000, some military aid with the held because Because RDF is helping, is associated with the rebels. Come on. This is not serious. Honestly. And it's not the money. It's even just the name you are giving the RDF and this country that it does not deserve and has no basis. It's not this money. What is 200? It's nothing. But it's, it's just even that responsibility. And then you have these organizations running around. Nobody knows who they are. Nobody knows what they do. Nobody knows where they are accountable. And they, 
They say, oh, uh, some experts on the ground have said this. Jesus. <laughs> if the world has these kinds of experts, <laughs> you know, on whose account of their report people are going to be blamed and penalized and abused and oh, then 